Life Lost Two Friends. I'm Audrey Marine, and you can find me on Instagram at Stitch Stitch Bead. Uh, I am back, obviously, for another episode of Lost Tube. This will be my fourth episode. I did the first episode, and I was like, that's probably enough. <laughs> but then I got, you know, positive comments, and people seem to like me okay. So here we are. We're still going. <laughs> um, gosh, so I had, just to let you know, I had, like, you know, this cute shirt on, a cute sweater, and I had a little pin on, and it's way too hot in here. So I turned the, I cranked the AC up, and I put this on, and like, this is what we're doing today. So, just, it's what it is. But I have a lot of stuff to show you today, and I've got some news and some plans and stuff, so I'm excited. Hopefully, I will get through this without too many problems, so we'll see. Uh, but I wanted to share with you, uh, finish a couple FFOs, some progress, um, something that my son has started that I'm really excited about. And then we'll do Christmas in July. I have a lot of Christmas ornaments that I've finished over the years, so I'm gonna share those and maybe inspire you guys to do one or two or six Christmas ornaments before Yuletide comes around. Uh, and then I also have some purchases, some things that I have picked out and paid for and a mess of crap that my mom has bought. <laughs> so I realize that I need to be careful what I say because it might just show up. And then I was like, mom, did I want that? I, I did, I don't need this, but she bought it anyway, whatever. Okay, you just, you just say thank you and you take it, right? Well, I have, I have a finish. Let's start with that. Uh, I had mentioned to you guys before that I was working on a sampler to commemorate my fourth anniversary with my husband, Ryan. Uh, the fourth anniversary is traditionally linen and silk. So I chose a pattern off of Etsy. I found it in um, the little shop Stitches Through the Years. It's called A House Is. And I chose a 40 count linen. This is a solid color linen. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the color. But the information is on my Instagram at Stitch Stitch Bead. This uh, was supposed to be stitched in over dyed cottons. And I really like how that photographs, I think her samples look really nice. The designer samples look really nice. But as I say, I had a reason for choosing silk, so I went with silk. And I chose colors from Classic Color Works Belle Soie line. And there weren't very many colors, it's like seven or something, not many at all. So it was economical, easy, it's pretty quick to stitch actually. And it's a good size, it looks nice. You can see. So these, these silks are variegated slightly it just doesn't come through as well as in the cottons. But that's nice. I did manage to finish that a few days before our anniversary. It's obviously not framed, but it's fine. It's done. Check it off the list. So that's nice. And then since I finished that uh, for about a week, maybe a little bit more than a week, I was working exclusively on this. I started this back in April. This is Spring Quaker by Lila Studio. And I started here, kind of did this section, did up across here, um, and I had a little bit of this area done. But in the week that I worked on it after I finished my anniversary sampler, I actually finished all this and up here. There are just a few little elements in the border that I haven't finished. I haven't done the B skip or the bees, and I want to include the year. I want to include 2023. So I'll show you what I've got done so far. And this is on 40 count as well. I believe this is Heartland. And these are with the called for threads. The I should say it's with the called for variegated, but this is, the pattern calls for a combination of variegated, cottons and DMC and instead of using the DMC I chose more variegated cottons and it's all from classic color works so um and I I made a lot of progress on this and I do like how it looks but I'm gonna take a break from it I feel it's fun to stitch while I'm working on it but because I've spent so many hours in such a short amount of time kind of get the feeling that if I continue with it I'm gonna get a little burnt out and just not like it so 
to prevent that from happening. I'm going to put it away for a couple weeks or so, and I will come back to it. Um, but I, I do really like it. I like the fabric. I like the colors. So I've only got a little bit in the border and then the middle to do. So I imagine if I worked on it intensely for a couple weeks, I could get it done. Maybe, maybe even less than that. But it kind of depends on how much free time I have to me. And it's already the middle of July. And Ryan and I are taking the kids to Manhattan this month. Why, you ask? Because he has to work there for one day. And he's like, well, why don't we take the kids and we could make it a family trip? And I was like, Manhattan is a toilet. <laughs> Ugh. So we're taking them. And I'm going to, I told Ryan, I was like, well, you know, if I go to a big city, I just want to go to museums and eat. That's what we do when we go places. We go to museums and we eat. I was like, what are we going to do with the kids? What am I going to do with the kids? Because you got to be, there's one day, maybe an extra half a day that you have to work. And he's like, we'll take them to museums. Just drag them in there. And I was like, okay. So I like got them all excited. I was like, we're going to go to the Met. And they're like, what's that? It's going to be six hours of hell for you, <laughs> but I'm going to love it. But, um, I told him I would take him to Koreatown and we were just like, order all the food and it would be amazing. I love Korean food. And they, you know, in their advanced years of nine and 11 are, they're really good eaters. I will say that Rupert and Morris are really good eaters. They'll try anything. We went out to dinner the other night with Ryan's mom and Ryan's grandmother and Rupert was looking at the menu he really likes fish I've mentioned this before and he was gonna get the monkfish and Ryan was like well have you ever had monkfish before and he's like no that's why I want to try it this is just how he is instead of being the kid that's like I'm only gonna order chicken tenders because I know exactly what they taste like and we know exactly what to he will just try anything and we got these grilled artichokes and he gobbled those things up and anyway they're really good eaters so Ryan actually took them today and get them out of my hair he took them to the children's museum and to an Indian restaurant for lunch so because I don't really care for Indian food uh so if they're doing that today we'll see how that goes I I think they'll enjoy it Okay, so, oh, um, back to the Manhattan trip. So we're only going to be there a couple days, but if anybody has any recommendations of a neat shop that I could visit, it has to be in Manhattan. I'm not leaving the island. We're going to fly in on Monday, and then we're going to leave Thursday morning. So we're not really there very long, and I do want to go to one or two or six museums. So, okay, so I've shown you my finish and my progress. Oh, and then I've got a couple other finishes. So I did show this pattern before. I bought this pattern last year, I think, at Persnickety Stitches up in per Persnickety Stitchers up in Zionsville, Indiana. I bought this and so cute. And so I looked for more. Um, but actually mom bought me a bunch. She bought me, well, she bought me three. She tried to buy four, but one wasn't available. Um, so I had already stitched this last year, but then I stitched this one as well. And then a couple weeks ago when I was up visiting her, it was me and the kids in her house and, you know, driving her batty, I'm sure. But she actually took my tiny little stitches and she finished them into tiny little pillows. <laughs> So she, uh, she let me choose from her charm packs that she had. And she had this collection that was like all blacks and grays and stuff on cream. So it worked out perfectly because this is actually a cream fabric. And I like this tiny little pattern. So cute, black on cream. And I had purchased these tassels and the cord before I went up to her place. So, ugh, so cute. So she sewed them all together. And then when I got home... I stuffed them with, it's just polyfill, but it's a lot of polyfill. I stuffed them and I sewed up the sides, which just look okay. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Nobody's supposed to look at that, right? But these are so cute. And I had told her I was going to make these little bows and stick them on the corner. And I might still do that, Ma. I just didn't get around to it. Like, it's been a week, okay? But at least I got those stitched up and they're so cute. So, those are hanging up. And it makes me 
I'm glad that we did that. I'm glad that she sewed those up for me because now I feel like I can make all the smalls because before I was like, well, I want to make all these smalls, but I don't really want to finish them. And I don't have a finisher. Like maybe one day I will find someone and you know, it'll work and whatever. But she's like, well, let me just do them. I can do pillows. So she's, she said that she'd do any little tiny pillows that I sent her. And I think for other things, that I want made into pillows, I can have her sew them, then I can stuff them and um, sew up the side and whatever. And then if I wanna add edging, I can do that. That's no issue. I can just hand stitch that, tack it on, whatever. But these are so cute. <laughs> I like this. So, okay. I have a new start. Uh, I mentioned before that I bought Hannah Campbell from Hands Across the Sea. And I got the 103s and the chart and the fabric, uh, 45 count legacy Thai iced tea, Thai iced tea from the attic. And I was really excited to start that. And I'm still excited to start that. But that is not the thing that I started. I started a different Hands Across the Sea that I purchased. I purchased Hannah Campbell. My mom purchased me a slew of hats after that. And then I purchased... Elizabeth Wood because I did want to have a red sampler pattern on hand and I started this mainly because um, I ordered some fabric ordered some new fabric I ordered from X2 designs on Etsy I just ordered directly from her you can buy her fabrics from shops and other places online but I ordered directly from her and one of the things that I ordered was a 56 count But I was stitching this and I realized I want, so I picked a very light, not modeled fabric, you know, solid color, very light uh, for, the, for the first 56 I was gonna use because I wanted to make it easy on myself, stitching on 56 for the, for the first time. And it was fine. I feel like I did a really good job and I like how it looks and I really like how it feels. So nice. But I'm stitching this and I realized, you know, I didn't even try the 45 yet, nor did I try a 46. I went straight from a 40 to a 56. All right, well, it turned out fine. <laughs> turned out fine. And I have plenty of room to finish this, plus I can do another one on this side, I think. Um, but I like this one, it's a nice, simple little design it's very dense though like there are a lot of letters and a lot of stitches in this tiny little piece so it's going to be small on on this 56 but i do like it i think i'm already yeah like a quarter of the way through maybe more that's good and i just started this a few days ago today is saturday i started it on wednesday yeah started it on wednesday and i've got it in this is one of my new purchases uh I start so I'm stitching it on 56 count old sheep by X2 designs and I'm using the called for 103 this is 523 this is a nice kind of like a cherry red dark cherry red that's pretty looks nice and I've got it in this super cute bag I got this from Penny and Tunny on Etsy like I need a project bag but it was so cute <laughs> fabric so cute yeah so I had to have that it wasn't that much money so I've got all that together but it's funny though so I mentioned uh, my two boys they're 9 and 11 and they are stitching Mill Hill kits which is what I started on when I was really young and they like them all right but Morris the nine-year-old he was watching me stitch this and I had mentioned, you know, a couple times offhand, like, well, one day you can learn to stitch on linen, right? And, but I was, I was working on this and he's watching me and mom, what are you working on and everything? And, uh, he, he said that, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to learn to stitch on linen. And I was like, okay, well, when do you want to start? <laughs> and I asked him this at like nine o'clock at night on what day was it? Thursday. It must have been Thursday because he just started this. 
Anyway, so I asked him this at like nine o'clock at night. I was like, we can, we can start soon. Do you want to start like tomorrow? He's like, can we start now? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can start now. So nine o'clock at night, we're rifling through my fabric and um, he, he, I, I limited him to 32 count and, and I explained to him why it's 32 count, why this is 32 count, why this is 40 count, whatever. And he totally got it. And I said, so, you know, I'm stitching, I'm stitching this on 56 count, which means I have 28 stitches per inch. I said, so if I give you a 32 count, he's like, that's 16 stitches an inch. And I was like, yeah, buddy, that's right. So he totally gets it. Uh, so he picked out a fabric, 32 count French vanilla. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And then I let him go through my box of DMC. So this is how I keep my DMC. Well, not that wad right there. <laughs> that's not normal. I got these boxes at Michael's earlier this year. I got them on super sale and actually I think eventually they won on clearance and now they don't sell these anymore, but they should have something similar if you're looking for this. When I started stitching the Just Nans, like the baby samplers and stuff, you can see on my Instagram or in previous videos, uh, a lot of the colors were going to be reused. She would use the same groups of colors from one chart to the next. And I thought, I don't wanna buy, you know, I don't wanna keep buying 310. I don't wanna buy a new 310 for everything. Um, so I thought I would just buy what I need as I needed it and then put them on these bobbins. And these bobbins I got off of Etsy. And these stickers, the these are DMC produced stickers. I think you could buy them at Michaels. They're like $2 for the stickers. The bobbins, I will say, are more. I got them from GW Stitchin Company. No, Depot. GW Stitchin Depot. When I finish this video, I will link the proper Etsy shop in the info box below, okay? But this is how I organize my DMC. Everything as of right now fits in this one box, but I did buy a few more boxes so that as I expand my DMC collection, I will have room to store them in the exact same way. So I, uh, as I say, I let Morris, you know, we, he picked out a 32 count linen and then he loves red, like loves red. And so he's, I, I said, well, do you want like a red red or a cherry red or a burgundy or a wine or whatever? And he's like, let me see your reds. And he like rifles through. And he went with 817, which I don't actually have with me, but I can show you what he picked out. So he was, he was saying that he wanted to learn to stitch on linen and he loves red and he liked what I was doing with Elizabeth Wood. And he said, I would like to do a red one with the letters too. And I was like, well, have I got the pattern for you? So I pulled out, I pulled out Keeper of the Pins because I knew that there was a little pillow in here that was just the alphabet. So I pulled this out and I said, well, what about this one? He loved it. So he chose that and he's got a cream colored fabric. And he started, as I say, Thursday night and it is Saturday morning right now. And this is what he has done. I think that's very impressive. I texted my mom. She's like, oh my gosh. And then, um, well, actually I had her, I had Morris call her and they talked for a little bit about, I don't know what, like cheese I'm sure was one of the things. Morris loves cheese. He loves cheese and he loves red. <laughs> and now he's very excited about stitching. But as he was stitching this, actually, I think it was, yeah, it was yesterday as well. I was like, I need to share this with somebody else. So I texted Laura Duet. I was like, look at what he's doing. <laughs> And she was so excited for him and me. And and it's funny because I've had uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter Blast Tubes on, just like on as background noise and stuff. And uh, then Morris has gotten into it. He's like, I want to watch him. And so, you know, he's sitting in here and he's like stitching away on his little Brenda Gervais. And he's got 
<laughs> he's got floss too, Bob. It's so funny. So I texted Laura and I sent her a picture of him stitching all this and everything. And she's like, oh my gosh, keep me posted. But then she also wanted to know when my next floss tube was and was Ryan in Toronto for IndyCar? <laughs> I was like, no, he's not. But that's okay because now he can take them to the Children's Museum. So Morris just started that Thursday night. And oh my God, though. So now he's all like, well, what can I do next? I'm like, oh boy. And I told him that I would take him to a stitchy shop and like let him pick stuff out or whatever. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I got to get some weeks. <laughs> I was like, okay, what are you going to do with your new weeks floss? I don't know. <laughs> but he wants it. It's so funny. So he wants to pick out some weeks. I was like, well, there's a whole, there's walls of floss. And you can, I said, you can pick out like, mm, and he's like, 10? <laughs> I was like, 10 is good. 10 is good. And I was thinking that's going to cost me like $25. So that's good. That's fine. <laughs> um... But he's already, you know, what can I do next? What can I do next? And I think he wants to do something else in this book. I think he <laughs> he wants to do the one that says my soul is fed with needle and thread. He's such a grandma. Um, so he, but then we started talking about, well, what are some other things that we can do? You know, I asked him, I was like, do you really want to do more things with letters? Do you want to do something that has flowers or animals or houses or something? Because I've got to think of what's actually available out there. And those are the things. Uh, but he said that he wanted to do something that had a poem because he wanted to do something small, something he could put in a frame, but just with letters because he really has enjoyed stitching these letters. And so we kind of looked online a little bit, but then I went into my Etsy favorites and we actually found something that I had favorited that he really liked. It's a summer house stitch works and it's called forever in stitches and it's like long and skinny and it has a saying up top I don't remember um and then it's got kind of a zigzag design with some flowers but it's only four or five different colors and so you know he was so excited about going to the stitchy shop to pick out weeks <laughs> like why weeks why are you obsessed with the weeks I don't know but uh, I said, well, do you want to pick out your own colors for this pattern? Or do you want to use the called for it? He's like, oh, I want to use the called for. <laughs> I'm like, okay, child. <laughs> it's so funny. He's so funny. And Rupert, the 11-year-old, has started his Mill Hill fish, the five and a half by five and a half fish. He's got a lot of water ahead of him, though. Because, like, the bottom half is all water. And then the top half is all sky. And then there's, like, this jumping trout, this rainbow trout in the middle. He's got a ways to go. Morris told me, though, that he likes stitching on linen better than perforated paper. <laughs> okay. But he's having a lot of fun with that. But he keeps asking, like, when can we go to the stitchy shop? And I said, well, you know, we should be able to go sometime next week. Well, when? And I said, you know what? After you've completed this, then I'll take you to the stitchy shop. So he's like, oh, my God, I got to do more letters. I got to get it done. I was like, we have time, kid. But he's so excited. And I love that he's excited. You know, you never know what a kid is going to be excited about. Because I didn't want to push either of them into cross-stitch. Like, they might not care at all. Like, you know. I don't know. Everybody has their own interests, their own preferences. I don't want to push my own agenda onto my children. But you never know what it is that they're going to get excited about. And and I remember, you know, it not might not matter so much with hobbies I guess but I was talking to my mom and I think I told Ryan this as well but I remember reading I read this book back in high school and then I think I read it again in college um uh it's a uh, big bang by Simon Singh and there was this anecdote in it about Edwin Hubble like of Hubble telescopes and I remember that how did it go his grandfather gave him a telescope when he was eight or something. And that's the thing that got him excited about astronomy and space and science. And then he went on to become what he became, right? So you never know what it is that's going to set a kid off. So I tell Ryan sometimes, like, I don't know what their telescope is going to be, right? And so, as I say, it's maybe doesn't matter so much with 
stitching, with crafting, with whatever. I don't expect either of the kids to make a career out of cross stitch, but I want to expose them to different things. And that goes for food too. And I think that's why they're really good eaters because we've taught them like, just try a bunch of different things. Some of it's terrible, but some of it's amazing. And if you hadn't tried it, then you'd never know. All right, that's my PSA for today. Oops. <laughs> it fell. Okay. So I showed you what I've been working on. I showed you what Morris has been working on. And so now let's get into Christmas in July. I have made, I think this works out to be more than 30 Mill Hill ornaments. I will show you the ones that I have completed and then I'll show you the ones that I have kitted and you know, the common kits. But I'll show you those, um, the ones that I've yet to work on. So that'll be what comes next. Not necessarily this year. I'll probably do at least one more this year. Um, but our tree, I'm happy with how our, we've got a big tree and I'm happy with how full it looks with the mill hill that I've made. And then also the ornaments that we have purchased, of course. Um, we have, so Ryan's mom gifted us with a collection of the White House ornaments, if you guys are familiar with it. They're like laser cut brass and they're three dimensional and each one commemorates some significant thing that happened in the White House sometime. Uh, you know, and it's not necessarily in chronological order. It's not like the first ornament was about George Washington and the second ornament is about World War. But she started buying these, I think she said the year that Ryan was born, so 88. And so she has been purchasing a new one every year for both Ryan and his sister Megan. And so then now we have a house and we have a Christmas tree and we got all these. And I'm saying all this because they're beautiful and if you only buy one a year, then it's not so awful. Um, but they're gold and sparkly and so they look really good with all these gold and sparkly Mill Hill ornaments that I've made. And I really like how they look. So now when I buy ornaments, I look for gold or warmer colored ones rather than silver or cooler colored ones. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I have finished, not necessarily in the order that I made them, but I'm gonna go in the order that they came out, I believe. Now I'll start with the non-Santa ones, then with the Santa ones, okay. So these are, these are snow charmers, and I believe there are two series of snow charmers. Some of these are for, from 2001, I meant to look up when the other uh, Snow Charmer series came out, but I don't remember. But these are about 20 years old. The, the design is about 20 years old. I did not make these 20 years ago, but it's been a while. So there's this one. So this would be Wreath Charmer, and they're all named after what they're holding or how they're decorated. And these are, you know, they're all stitched with DMC, and these are Mill Hill beads. It's all done on perforated paper, and then I finished it with an embossed paper that I purchased at Michael's and I also got this cord at Michael's and I just used some acid-free glue. I think this must be stocking charmer. <laughs> He's cute. And we've got gingerbread charmer here and the, the eyeballs on the gingerbread man, they never stay. <laughs> so he doesn't look quite right. <laughs> the little beads don't stay where they're supposed to. Yeah, oh well. But he's pretty cute. I like that one. And I believe this would be Mitten Charmer. And then I think this is Star Charmer. And maybe this one doesn't make sense. You know, he's not holding a wreath or a gingerbread cookie or something. But I think this one is my favorite. And actually his scarf is supposed to be red and green. And I stitched a red and green version. But then I was like, you know what? I want to do red on red. I want to do tonal. So I did a red and a dark red. And I really like how it turned out. So this, this one is my favorite of the Snow Charmers. And from 2002, Santa Faces. And again, I think there are two series of Santa Faces. Um, some of the Santa faces are supposed to be done with a crew and some of them are supposed to be done with white, but I did them all with a crew. Same with the 
Same with the snow charmers. All, these are supposed to be, some are a crew snowmen and some are white snowmen. I did them all in a crew because I wanted that softer color on my tree. And I don't remember the names of these and I didn't look it up. But these are from 2002. At least one of the Santa Fe series is from 2002. And the hats, I kind of, some of them I did my own color combinations. really cute but I think he like he was supposed to have a different hat but I didn't like it so I took a hat from a different Santa face and put it on him <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking it doesn't matter but these were so quick to stitch because the beard it's just all all a crew and I use a beading needle when I do the stitches so that when I get to a spot that requires a bead if it's the same color I can just pick up the bead so I was able to just do row by row by row by row because I use a beading needle. And then this is the last one that I have of the Santa Faces. And I like that all their beards are, oh, that was interesting, different, swirly whirly, yeah. Swirly whirly gumdrop, what is that from? The things that run around in my head, I swear okay and then holiday harmony I showed these I think on my first video uh this is a series that came out in 2007 and I probably did these around I don't know 2010 2011 or something so not that long after they came out there are six in the series there are the ones that I have done and there is also a drum but I did not stitch the drum this is the harp and this is Krynik. The strings are Krynik. And it's, you know, kind of fiddly. You got to cut out the center and then put the Krynik strings on it. But it's so pretty. <laughs> it's really pretty. So it's worth it. I mean, you're not making a million of them. So I did make some extras of some of these, though, and gave them to friends of ours. The trumpet this is the violin I really like the violin I love that color the rich warm brown color and the mandolin and the French horn and you know if you don't have animals or kids or a day job you can do one of these a day <laughs> Angels. This is a series from 2014. We are going out of chronological order now. It doesn't matter. Uh, these ones I think I did just last year. And I really like these. I'm not a religious person, but these were too pretty not to do. I don't care. It's a Christmas tree. Like Santa. So, okay, my kids watch these floss tubes. And I have my opinion on the Santa thing. If you see me in person, you can ask me, but I have to be careful what I say <laughs> with my young children watching. Um, remember that episode of Friends when, was it Chandler or Ross said, oh, and you know the deal with Santa. And then they keep talking about something else. And then Phoebe later says, you know, when you said the deal about Santa. Yeah. Anyway, so we've got Santas on the tree. We can have angels on the tree. These, uh, as I say, came out in 2014. And everything I've shown you, you can still buy the kits for. Uh, some of them might be harder to find than others, but, but they are still available. These ones took longer than the Santas and the Holiday Harmony, of course. These are, these are larger. The kits are also more expensive. But these are really pretty. I like these. And again, I just finished them with embossed paper on the back. In a loop and I find that they're stiff enough I mean these are not gonna last a hundred years I know that but but they'll last and they should last my lifetime it's funny I pulled the I pulled the box of Christmas ornaments out today because I had to get these out and Morris was in here with me and he said 
Ooh, I like that box. I want one of those. I opened it up and there's all the glittery Christmas ornaments. I want one of those when I'm a grown up. And I said, well, when I die, you can have this. And he goes, yay. It's like, okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Don't be too excited when I die. Uh, Mill Hill also came out with an antique keys series in 2021. There were three keys in the series. And then in 2022, they came out with the antique locks series, uh, the trilogy, I should say three in those obviously, but I just chose to do the winter lock and the winter key rather than doing all the keys and all the locks. So these are those. These are really pretty. And again, gold and glittery and very shiny. I like this. I remember I was stitching one of these in Las Vegas. Ryan has to go to Las Vegas like at least once a year for work. But hopefully that will, well, I shouldn't say hopefully because it was lucrative what the job was. But um, he does not like Las Vegas and I don't like Las Vegas. He has to go for work and then he wants me to go with him. I'm like, you know, it's cheaper if you leave me home. And also, I don't like Las Vegas. He's like, but I don't want to go by myself. I hate Las Vegas. I was like, well, you're a grown-up. But whatever. <laughs> Every time he, sometimes he does go and he has to go by himself, though. And I'm like, okay, have fun. Don't get hepatitis. <laughs> that place is so weird. Why does it exist? We watched, um, what's the name of that movie? It was nominated for an Oscar. Is it Bugsy? Yeah, he did not like that movie. I thought it was interesting, at least. Okay, this is Magi Trilogy, and this is from 2011. And again, like, I don't, the story doesn't, whatever. But these are so sparkly and colorful that I had to make these. Also, every time I pull these out, I think about that one episode of Psych, uh, Christmas Joy, which I don't like that they gave Gus a sister for one episode and then we never saw her again. But I do think it's funny because there's that display of the wise men and all of the wise men are white and they're indignant about that. And Joy says, I thought everybody knew about Balthazar. <laughs> it's so funny. And look, here he is as he's black. <laughs> so I love it. I love these. They're so colorful. So sparkly. Okay, so now I will show you all of my Santos. I'll show you all the ones that are fully finished off with the loops. And then I have a couple more that are stitched, but not quite ready to go on the tree. And then I have some that are not started at all, but we'll get into that. Okay. So again, these are not necessarily in the order that I made them, but in the order that Mill Hill released the, um, release the kits. And they've been putting out a threesome of Santas every year for the last 20 years or so. And um, there are a lot that I have missed. But some of them I don't really care for. Some of them I might go back and do. Haven't really decided. You know, you got to prioritize what you put your time into. But these are the medieval Santas from 2006. These are so cute. I think this is the Canterbury and Avignon and I don't remember what this guy was called and I could have this all wrong but Canterbury this always roommate um you know makes me think of Canterbury Tales which makes me think of Chaucer which makes me think of A Knight's Tale if you too love that movie you let me know I think I saw that movie in theaters three times <laughs> and we still quote it all the time it's so funny I love it Okay, next, uh, Arctic Circle Santas, and I have shown these before. These are from 2009. Polar bear, here we've got some kind of sheep, and a reindeer. There's, um, you know, not a ton of beading on here, but enough to give it some sparkle. I like them. And I think they're a good size. Like, if you have a... I don't know, five to eight foot tree. I think this will look good. If you try to put it on a tiny little tree, I think they're gonna be too big. But <clears throat> all right, these ones are kind of funny. You know, they don't really look very Santa-y, but I like them anyway. These are the seafaring Santas from 2010. They're cute. 
he's got an anchor. And I've had people send me photos of their own seafaring Santas and say, oh, I did these for, you know, my husband who was in the Navy. And I think there were two people who had a similar story who sent that to me. I, I love that. Captain Santa. This series, Celebration Santas from 2014, there are three in this series. So there's this guy who looks like your traditional Santa. Uh, you know, I learned this back in college and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was Thomas Nast who developed the Santa image that we know today. The big jolly guy with the big white beard and the red coat and the shiny black boots. And I think it was some sort of advertising campaign. This would have been a really long time ago, like a hundred years ago. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a while since I've read about that. But so this is your traditional Santa. Uh, also in this series is the Feliz Navidad Santa, I believe is what they called it. And he's got a sombrero and a poncho. Is that what they put him in? And then there's one uh, a Joyo Noel Santa and he's like holding a goose in a basket. Very French. He's a baguette though. Oh my gosh. I know in my last in my last video I was talking about my trip to France. I don't know if I told this story though but <laughs> you know how like you learn these stereotypes about people and cultures and things and you're like well they're just stereotypes. But then you go there and experience, you're like, there's stereotypes for a reason. So there was a grocery store near the rental house that we stayed in. And we went there a few times because we were there for nine or ten days. And one time we saw this guy. He was like pushing a cart and he had two mini kegs and a bunch of six packs and bottles of wine and a baguette. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. It was like, Trey French. <laughs> so funny. All right, Celtic Santas from 2015. Scottish Santa. And I thought it was so cool. I didn't even change these colors or anything, but the colors in his kilt, his tartan, are very similar to the Murray clan, which is mine. So I like that. And then this is Irish Santa. My sister-in-law and her husband actually live in Ireland. It's pretty cool. And then this is Wales Santa. And I thought it was interesting that they made him, gave him a gold helmet. He's got a gold pin here and some other gold accessories. Because I do think there are gold mines in Wales, if I remember correctly. I think the royal family will often have wedding rings made from gold from Wales. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember reading that at some point. And then in 2016, uh, Mill Hill came out with these Renaissance Santas. Renaissance. So I'd like to say it, but then I sound yeah, pretentious is the word. <laughs> so let's not do that. This is, this one always it always reminds me of, is it Al Pacino, who was in that one version of Merchant of Venice? <laughs> I watched it once. Don't bother. It's fine. And this guy with very fun pants. Look at those pants. <laughs> yeah. And then this one, I assume, is supposed to be Leonardo da Vinci. He was such a pain in the butt. If I were to make any of these Santas again... And this would not be one of them. He was such a pain in the butt. That painting. There's a lot of color changes in that painting. And I just remember I was having so many problems. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> Put me off of Santa's for quite a while. Okay. In 2020, Mill Hill came out with these. So this is the Antarctic Santas. We've got Albatross Santa and Penguin Santa and Leopard Seal Santa. Those are so cute. And I, I think these are Santa-ish. They're certainly wintry. 
this series is definitely traditional looking Santa, right? This is the Christmas Day Santas, and this is their series from 2021. We've got Christmas giving. There's a little kitty and some presents, and Santa's wearing a hideous sweater. And we've got Christmas memories. Got a turkey and a puppy dog, and there's that same cat. And then puppy dog is on this one. This is Christmas morning. Like his ridiculous socks and his bunny slippers. <laughs> Look at that. I say as I'm wearing really ridiculous slippers right now. From 2022... They came out with Timberline Santas. And th this is another series that they really look like Santas. So we've got a uh, Scotch Pine Santa. And this kit I have not started, but I have actually finished the Norway Spruce Santa. And this took less than a week. This area with the tree, I mean, you kind of got to pay attention to what's a bead and what's a dark green and what's a medium green. But the great thing about it is, you know, if you mess up here or there, it doesn't matter. It's a tree, right? A little squirrel. That's cute. And I stitched but did not finish off the Douglas fir Santa. This one's really cute. I, rem I, I know I messed up somewhere down here in the corner. Um, had to do a little bit of fixing that, but usually I don't have too many problems with these. Pretty simple. The charts are really easy to read. And then for this year, Mill Hill, uh, released this year's Santas. They're from Dan Under. Yeah. And these are Steve Irwin delivered presents with koala bear. I don't know. <laughs> one of my favorite memes is so ridiculous it's just a picture of a koala kind of going like this and he's like what do you mean i'm not a bear <laughs> i have all the qualifications <laughs> it's so dumb i know but i love it so we've got santa with koala bears santa with kiwi birds and santa with kangaroos there's a little joey look at him so again <laughs> The kids, I showed this to the kids. They're like, it doesn't look like Santa. I'm like, okay, well, you don't have to make them and you don't have to put them on your tree. But I, I think they're pretty cute. I might actually do those. There are some ones, it's like South America Santas and uh, National Park Santas. And, you know, they look like park rangers. They don't look like Santa. I, I don't know. Do you want to do them all just to do them all? Or do you want to pick and choose? I think I'm just picking and choosing. There's no way I'm going to do them all. Okay, so we, I showed you my Santas, my other ornaments that I've done. So on the Christmas theme, I will show you <laughs> purchases for my mother. It's Christmas in July and she sent me stuff. She sent me Christmas theme stuff and also just stuff. Uh, in my last episode, I mentioned how I went to House of Stitches and I walked in and the first thing that I saw was this display of Sweetheart Tree stuff. I was like, no, I can't get that because it would add up to like $120. Well, guess what? She called House of Stitches and had them send her what they had. So this is a series, um, this is a series based on the that song, 12 Days of Christmas, right? And so they were out of a few when she called. So she got what they had and then she found this uh from where did you where did you get this mom one two three or something and uh so now i have now i have everything except seven but i found that on ebay and it still had the beads and everything so brand new good to go so one you know you've got your partridge in a pear tree two turtle doves french hens and so on and so forth so those are really cute I like those and the, you know, these should be about the same size as, huh, same size as these, maybe just a little bit bigger. So it would take me a day-ish to do one. And then my, you get to finish them for me. 
these look like they're finished into, you know, onto chipboard or something, maybe padded, but finished onto board and then trimmed. But I think, look at the back, we've got the same design, it's just not pointed. I think I might do that and then have them finished into little pillows because how cute are these little things and they're the right size for an ornament. Like you could put this, you could put this on your Christmas tree. It's fat, but it's not, it's not too big. <laughs> you just watch me squish a pillow. So I do really like those. So thanks, Ma. Did not need those, but I'm very thankful to have them. And I think they'll stitch up pretty quickly. And then I made some purchases for myself. Um, I mean, I'm not going to show you exactly everything that I bought, but these are Christmas themed. Cute. I want to have, like I said, I don't really have anywhere to display this stuff, but I just want to make it. And so that when I finally have cute little nooks and crannies and shelves and console tables and whatnot, then I have stuff to put on them. These little Santas, uh, this is Snowbirds by Brenda Gervais. And then this is called A Bowl Full of Mary's, Mary 2. So I guess there must've been a Mary 1. This is Plum Street Samplers. And I thought this was cute and really simple, but then when I got it in person, I was like, oh my God, look how fat that snowman is. He's just a big ball with a face. I like it. He's cute. I think that'll stitch up quickly. Look at those. Okay, and then when I visited my mom a couple weeks ago, She's like, well, we got to order some stuff from Hobby House. Okay, mom, we got to order some stuff from Hobby House. I'm not going to say no, but we did. We ordered some stuff from Hobby House. I had been looking at this. <laughs> oh my God, let me tell you, this is really heavy. There is a lot of charting in here. Look how thick that is. As a comparison, look at this. This is Elizabeth Wood. There's a lot to this. This is Florence Mary Dickinson. This is a Hobby House exclusive. So I got mine successfully. If you want it, they should still have some. You can call or you can place your order online. I would say if you really want something, like you want to have it in your hands now, maybe call and talk to a human because we placed this order two weeks ago and I just got it. But I do know that on that homespun Facebook group, they had just released their latest exclusive and it was with Hobby House. So I think they were inundated with orders for that. Uh, so, and even my mom asked me, she was like, well, did you get your Hobby House order yet? She asked me a few days ago. And I was like, no, but you know, they, they're running this exclusive and I think they're overwhelmed and stuff. So I know that they got the order. I can see it in my online account. So I'm not really worried about it okay, well, maybe you should call. And then I think it was the next day that I got an email saying that the order had been fulfilled. There was one fabric that wasn't available, but they still sent everything else. And I was like, I don't, I don't need that fabric. It's no big deal. So we got that, Florence Mary Dickinson. And I've seen other people stitch this and it's really pretty. I really like it. So eventually I'll get the threads for that. Okay, you wanna look at linen? We got, I say we, cause I picked it up, but mom paid. I got some 46 count, and then I got another 56 count. <laughs> Let's see what we got. This is 46 count squirrel nutkin by Tabby Cat. I like this. It's kind of got a pinkish tone to it. It's very warm. I like it. I think that's a pretty good representation of it. Like that. That's 46 count. And I think I got, what did I get? Fat quarter. I think I got a fat quarter of everything. Not yet up to buying yards. This is also Tabby Cat, also a fat quarter, and this is just the ticket. This is much more yellow than I expected. It's almost a yellowish green, but I like this. I think this is really pretty. And oh, I had something in mind to put on this, and now I don't remember what it was. 
but I do like this. And again, it's a Weigart base. You can see that. I like that. Okay. And then the last Tatty Cat that I got was 56 count creme brulee. And I know I'm going to show this and my mom's going to be like, why did you get that? Well, you paid for it, mom. It's funny, I showed this. I pulled it out and I showed it to Morris and he's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that looks yummy. Can I have it? I was like, no, you can't have it. 56 count, are you insane? <laughs> he is a little... So this is very modeled. I'm sure you've seen this. Other people have stitched on it. Other people love it. Other people have used it. I, I know like the thing to do when you go to the attic, as I've gleaned from various videos, is to get the rose and the giant pear and to stitch it on 56 count creme brulee by Tabby Cat. And now that I've stitched on 56 count, I know it's plain and it's light colored, but I do, I do think I could stitch on mottled or dark colored 56. I just have to have good light. But I do like this. I'm gonna use this for Florence Mary Dickinson. That's what it calls for and I like the look. I like the look. And Ma, you just won't like it. <laughs> I don't like it, it's too mottled. <laughs> She's full of opinions. Okay. And the last thing that I got from Hobby House is 46 count dark mocha beige linen by XJU Designs. I had ordered some fabric directly from XJU on her Etsy, but they had this and I liked it. This I think I might use for the Alexanders of Lynch Rafen, which has really, really bright colors. Mm. Yeah. So these are the colors for the Alexanders. Ooh. Okay, so for those of you who are all excited about those tidy made boxes, but you can only find them used on eBay and you don't know what you're gonna get. Uh, my mom found these Gutterman boxes and I think she purchased them through Amazon, but then they were the order was fulfilled by um, the Quilted Bear in the UK. So if you want to find the Quilted Bear, it is in the UK. There's something in the US, but it's not, I don't know. Uh, but you can just look on Amazon for Guterman and they fit perfectly. And I know that there's room in there because they wiggle, but they fit very nicely, the 103s. I was a little worried when, when she gave them to me. She gave them to me at her house and I didn't have any 103s with me. And I was like, oh, I just want to put one in. I want to know that it fits. So like, as soon as I got home, a week and a half later, I tested it. And then uh, the nine-year-old took the 103s and he put them in, in these little boxes. And he's like, oh, well, we can also add these ones. And I was like, no, 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 don't mix them up. And he's like, oh, they're for two different things. Yeah, they're for two different things. So this is Hannah Campbell. And... This is for the Alexanders. Oh. So my point was the Alexanders, it's, I think the model was stitched on Coco by Weeks Dye Works, which is dark. But I think, I think I want to go with a dark. I think the colors will really pop. I mean, look at that. Yeah, I like that. Looks good. Let's put it out. And then, um, so as I say, these little boxes are by Guterman, G-U with the umlauts. Uh, T E R M A N N. Yeah. Oh, there you go. If you want to find this, this is the name brand. And she said, Well, I had to order one or I had to order five. So I ordered five. <laughs> so she got five. And then another thing that she bought for me <laughs> was. This, she got two of these so this is good for long-term storage of spools um, so I said oh well that'll be great because then I can keep project by project everything will fit in here but then when I'm done with it and won't need it anytime soon I can put it in this bigger thing because Ryan has a cat and the hair gets on everything so it's I know I'm 
very particular about some things, but I don't want cat hair in my projects. I don't want cat hair on my stuff. I don't want her walking on my stuff because she tracks litter everywhere and it drives me bonkers. So it's very important to me that everything is closed up and sealed very nicely. So these will work well. Uh, this is Art Bin, by the way. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, on the sticker, A-R-T-B-I-N. And I don't know how much she paid for these. I don't know. It, I don't think it could have been too much. So the thing that she sent me and forgot that she sent me were two more Hands Across the Sea patterns. When I got home after my week and a half trip, because as I say, the kids and I were at her house for a weekend and then we went straight to Holland, Michigan, where Ryan's grandma has a vacation house and we can use that. So we were there for a week and had some friends come over and stuff like that. So I was not at home for a good, I don't know, it was too long. I missed my house. And so, but when I came home, I came home to a bunch of packages, things that I had ordered. Uh, but then, you know, I'm opening stuff up and I was like, I didn't buy these. Who bought these? I called my mom because her name wasn't on the package at all. <laughs> and she's like, well, what did, I don't know. <laughs> yes, you, she bought it. So this one, I like that it's, I like that it's just alphabet. I don't mind it. I know a lot of people don't like alphabets. They get kind of, I don't know if they get bored with it or if they don't just, I don't know what it is. But um, I, I do like it. And there's some variety here. There are a few different types and and it only calls for five colors which keeps it simple and I've got linen choices now so I'm gonna order the the hundred threes and that'll be that'll be a start pretty soon and then this other one is Ann Oliver so cute I like the bright red in it I do like that look 681 Christmas red that must be what that is right there so I started at red sampler Elizabeth Wood because I have I've heard people talk about red sampler walls and I think Nicola Parkman even said something about a red sampler room but I'm sure some of her samplers are things that she's collected right I know she has stitched a lot but her collection that she has purchased has got to be extensive as well but I thought not just a red sampler wall but it would be cool to have red samplers mixed in with red heavy samplers like Hannah Campbell is not a red sampler but it's got a lot of red and warm colors in it so I think it would you know imagine Hannah Campbell surrounded by red samplers and then you've got some other ones that are red heavy like Ann Oliver I think that would be really cool so pretty and this doesn't look that big so it says on a 40 count the design would be about nine by nine it's like 8.85 by 9.3 so not bad I like that and this one on 40 count would be 13 by 13 this is bigger but I think you've got quite a bit of negative space in there with all those all those letters got those and then another thing last time I talked about um, something that I want to make so that when I go to a retreat in the future if I'm able to go is a stitcher's mat and i purchased this pattern by heartstring samplery it says a thankful life chairman a chair arm pin keep and it says count your blessings every day and it's got some you know basic motifs that you would see in in traditional samplers and you can make a little uh pocket for your scissors and uh pin cushion or little area right there to stick pins in so I thought that would be cute. I thought I could finish this and then also and get some quilting fabric that I like and you know I'll figure out how to do it by hand but maybe put a border on it and then back it and put some ribbon so that I can roll it up. I think that'd be really cute. And on the subject of retreats I get to go to a retreat in October at the end of October so I was thinking about going to one in November at the attic but then Laura Duet reached out and she's like, well, which one are you interested in going to? And this is what I'm doing. So she invited me to stay with her at the Sweta Weba retreat in um, Philadelphia. <laughs> I had to remember, like, what city is it? Uh, in October, at the end of October. So I get to go and stay with her uh, at the hotel right there where everything is. 
And I think it's going to be a good option for me because then I'll know someone there. And I'm very excited about this. So thank you, Laura, for inviting me. And, and also it's less expensive than some other things. And I think it's going to be more casual. I think it's going to be a good first retreat for me. And I am very excited. Um, so I get to look forward to that. So I'm going to make my stitchers mat. And I'm making a list of other things I need to bring. Like, you need to bring anything, right? You, there will be plenty of things for us to do, right? Um, but I want to have, I want to bring one project and some little accessories and whatever. And I don't know what we're going to be doing. Okay. <laughs> Is it October yet? <sighs> well, let me show you some other purchase that, uh, purchases that I made. Um, speaking of Laura, when I was in Holland, uh, just last week, was that just last week? Yeah. Uh, I, I texted her and I said, well, do you have any recommendations? Cause I knew, I know she had like, I knew she was born in Holland, but she doesn't live in Holland, but she's been there. And does she have any recommendations for stitchy shops? And she said, well, there's this, this quilt shop that I went to with my mom. Pressing matters is what it's called. But I know now that they have uh, cross stitch stuff. So I did go there one day when we were in Holland. I just went by myself and perused and they don't have a ton of cross stitch stuff. They have a handful of Blackbird patterns, uh, some Plum Street and Pansy Patch and a few other things. But they had a nice selection of motive fabrics and a really great thing. And maybe this is common in quilt shops. I don't go to quilt shops, so I don't know. But they had all the bolts of fabric that they had on the bottom shelves. But on the next shelf above it, almost at eye level, they had pre-cut fat quarters. So I would see a bolt that I liked. And, and it's like, I don't want to ask them to cut that. Oh, but look, it's already cut into a fat quarter. And because I was just looking for small pieces of fabric to finish smalls with, it was perfect. I just went around and plucked out a few things that I liked. So I found, um, these are all Moda. And I found plenty of things with small prints, small designs, so that even if it's cut, you know, into a little, little tiny thing, you'll still get the full pattern. So I found, let's start with this. Found these. I thought they would be good for Halloween. Just polka dots. Very simple. And uh, some of the Halloween designs I picked out are kind of primitive. And I thought this would work, you know. Nothing too modern, nothing too loud. It's kind of a dull orange and polka dots. Super, super simple. And then I found these blues. Again, small print. That these would work with a number of things. It's funny though, when I left, I was like, oh, I should have found fabric for this and I should have found fabric for that. But, you know, there are quilt shops around and and I can go, I can go and find some other stuff other places. Uh, and then in one section, I found all these really cool reds that I liked. So this is like a, a vine design, red on cream, and then again, red on cream. And I found that same design here, red on pink. And I thought these would work for Christmas, Valentine's Day, or just whatever. If I have a something that, you know, uses a lot of red and I want to tie that in but these are so cute. It's like little maple leaves or something. And then I like that design. So, I mean, I wanted a lot more stuff, but I tried to limit it. And then this also, you see it's the same pattern, but this is brown on cream. And then I really love this check. So I thought this would be cute for fall stuff, Thanksgiving, whatever, but so cute. So again, all Moda and they're not labeled. I don't know what they're called, but I found some Found a lot of stuff that I like, but I tried to limit it. Think about what I was really going to use and really going to need. And of course, they're always coming out with new fabrics and stuff, right? Yeah. In fact, I I was looking at fabric online the other night, and I found Moda has this line called Food Group. And oh, it's so cute! It's so cute. And uh, there are some pattern. There's a pattern that's just cheeses, and it, there are three different colorways with the cheeses. And I called my mom. I was like, okay, you got to make something out of this. Because my son Morris loves cheese. He loves cheese. He he has only found one cheese that he doesn't like. Wensleydale. And we tried it because it's mentioned in Wallace and Gromit. Because there's this whole thing. 
in one of the early, I don't know if you guys watch Wallace and Gromit, it's a Aardman animation thing and they've been around for 30 some years. Oh, we've got hummingbird. Ryan had me buy a hummingbird feeder and I was like, you know, I haven't seen any hummingbirds. And he's like, well, I saw one. And I was like, well, you only saw one. I haven't seen any. And there was one. All right. Um, oh, Wallace and Gromit. So I love Wallace and Gromit. There's an episode called A Close Shave. And at the very end, the woman that Wallace wanted to get with, he finds out that she doesn't like cheese. And this is like the worst thing ever. She's like, breaks me out into a rash. Can't stand the stuff. And, uh, so he's like, not even Wensleydale, because he loves Wensleydale. And I found Wensleydale in a in a grocery store one day, and it was like this tiny little wedge. It was like two fifty. I was like, oh well, we gotta try this, and none of us liked it. <laughs> it was real weird. Uh, but a funny thing is, I don't know if you guys know. Um, everybody knows that Andy Warhol do, did those Campbell's soup prints right? Those huge ones and they're all different wild colors and everything. Campbell's Soup was actually going under and then he did that and that like revived the Campbell's Soup industry. So that's why they're still around today. That's one of the contributing factors. But the same thing for Wensleydale. So Wensleydale is this tight, you know, it's this produced by one little farm somewhere in the UK and then I don't think it was doing so well and then it's mentioned on Wallace and Gromit and <laughs> And now there's like Wallace and Gromit themed packaging and it's cute anyway, but it's not a very good cheese. But Morris loves cheese and blue cheese and goat cheese and all these different cheeses. He loves them. He's not afraid of flavor. So I told my mom, I said, you got to make, use the cheese. And it's all on like pinks and reds and stuff, which he loves. And so I said, you got to make the cheese one <laughs> for the cheese monster. And then there's another pattern in the same collection and it's got like, ham hocks and and um and shrimp and other meats and stuff and I said well and it's on blue I said which Rupert loves I said they're gonna do that for Rupert so it's like not that she needs another project that she didn't pick out herself this goes back to like I don't want to make stuff I don't want to make but with that I was like mom you I can't quilt but somebody needs to use this cheese fabric so oh okay so in Holland I bought quilt fabric also, we went to a couple antique stores. We went to uh, Downtown Antiques, which is on the corner of River and 8th, I think, in Holland. And uh, actually went with Ryan and the kids. And I know you think you shouldn't take kids to an antique store, but they loved it. <laughs> they loved it. Last year, we were in Wisconsin or there was a race weekend that we went to and one of the days Rupert just wanted to stay at the racetrack with Ryan's dad and I was like okay well you do that and Morris didn't really care to do that and I was like well Morris you can go antiquing with me and he's like well what's antiquing and I said well you go to stores full of really old rusty crap and you look through it <laughs> he was like okay let's do that so actually he like they like it so it took both kids and my husband and you know my husband found like old NASCAR collectibles and things like that and Rupert found this weird uh matchbox car from 30 some years ago that he was excited about and got it for two bucks and but uh Morris found what did Morris get oh he got like some little charmy things he found a turtle that he really liked and uh but I found I found this neat bowl it had, it was full of buttons. It was like sitting there and it had all these buttons and the buttons were for sale, but the bowl was for sale too. And I was like, well, I really just want the bowl. I don't want the buttons. So Morris helped me pull all the buttons out. And I was like, oh, you know what? I don't want this after all. And he just looks at me like, I was like, no, 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 I'm getting the bowl. <laughs> so funny. So I think this is in pretty good condition and I got it for 12 bucks. So not bad. It needs to be, I think it needs to be cleaned. I think I'm going to clean it, oil it, whatever, and be ready for display on my non-existent furniture. And then another antique store that we went to uh, is called The Wooden Shoe. And um, that is not downtown, but it's not that far. It's only a few miles beyond. And it's big. It is a big antique mall. Uh, half of the building is like a breakfast joint. And then the other half is this huge antique mall. And they have some stuff. Holy cow. And I found, I found a 
couple old wooden spools. So this one is so tiny. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. But this one I thought I could stitch something and wrap it around and sew it on there. But I mean, even if you don't put anything on them, pretty cool for display, right? And I think it was like 30 bucks for both of those. But then another thing I found when I was walking around was this old firkin. And it was in good condition. It looked, it looked really nice. But it was $100. I was like, I can't do that. Uh, but then I kept walking. And in somebody else's booth, I found an even bigger one that I thought looked just as nice. And it was actually a sewing firkin. It had little pegs inside for your spools. And so, I mean, it does look rough. I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to oil it and, and it'll be ready for display. It's, it, it looks worn. Um, but this one I found. So it's got the pegs in there. And, and if, I don't know if you can see it on here, but there are like little bits of thread and stuff left in there. So it was, it was definitely used, but looks good. And this I got for 40 bucks. I didn't think that was so bad. After I purchased it, I was like, oh, well, maybe I should have checked eBay and looked to see what things were going for. Well, I checked eBay and something similar in terrible condition was going for about the same price plus $40 shipping. So I thought, well, this is in better condition. I obviously don't have to pay shipping. I was pretty happy with my purchase. So I like that. And I was thinking... You know, you go through these antique shops and you see all these things and, well, I don't need it. And where am I going to put it? What am I going to do with it? But then I thought, one day, I would like to be able to decorate and display things, whatnot. And I don't want to have to start from scratch on that day. So if I have some things. Also, uh, the room that I'm in now is a shared office that Ryan and I have. But... Uh, the cat comes in here and gets up on that desk and leaves just hair and litter everywhere. So, uh, I told Ryan that I gotta have a, I gotta have a, a spot in the house that is a clean room in the, you know, in that other sense. Um, so I fixed up, I shouldn't say fixed up, I should say I emptied and cleaned and painted the spare bedroom that is just across the hall when we had people stay for the 500. So I think eventually I'm going to get a, a bigger desk, a nicer desk, because this is fine, but it's just like a tabletop and legs from Ikea. So I'm going to get a nicer desk, hopefully, and put that in the spare room and have my setup over there. The, the downside is that there's one window in there and it's half the size of this window and it doesn't get very good light. Um, this window faces north and I've got a lot, even though it's a really cloudy day, I still have plenty of light coming in to do these videos and I don't really want to have to use artificial light. So that's something I'm kind of thinking about. I thought, well, do I want to have my sp stitchy space in there and then still do videos in here? I don't know. I don't know. It's something to be determined. But as of right now, because it's like I have everything is in bins. I can't just leave anything out. This can be left out because it's just hanging, right? But everything has to be in bins all the time or it's going to get, you know, laid on and whatever, chewed on. Okay, Marlo tried to eat a needle one day. I don't know if any of you, I know a lot of you have cats, pets, right? And Marlo likes to chew on metal. She will chew on zipper pulls. I've got this silver necklace that I wear a lot of times. She'll like cuddle up to me and like, oh, let's snuggle. And then she just like chomps down on my necklace, my $500 necklace from Tiffany. Like, don't chew on this. And, uh, and she chews on metal. And so I left a hoop with the, you know, the fabric and I've got my needle stuck in and I just like get up and I get a drink or whatever it was. And then I see, and <laughs> Like, what are you doing? And so I got to, thankfully, she did not eat the needle. But that's just, you know, I can't leave anything out. It's weird, though, because she doesn't steal floss. She doesn't steal, like, I could leave 
skeins out or hunks and she will not take it. She steals the boy's little plushies. I just found her with one today and it was like this little turtle and I was like, that's not yours. So she steals weird things and she chews on metal. She's very odd. <laughs> All this to say that I'm going to be moving my work area into a different room. <laughs> But it will be fun because I want to have a space that I can just walk into and is already ready for me, right? But I can't leave pin cushions out with needles in them if we've got a cat who's determined to eat needles. <laughs> All right. So I think that's everything that I have to show you guys today. I should have, let's see, I should have at least one finish for you next time. And I think maybe I'll do some more smalls just because they're so fun and they're so quick, really. And then maybe I'll have a finish for Morris to show you. I can show you uh, Rupert's progress with his fishy kit. He's gotten he's gotten a little bit into it. I think it's frustrating in a way, though, because he's stitching like six different blues on blue perforated paper. He loves blue, but I, I can see how it's going to be kind of taxing, kind of monotonous. So... We'll see how that goes. So uh, find me on Instagram at Stitch Stitch Bead if you like. And uh, as I say, I did three videos before this. So if you like this, you're welcome to check out those other ones. But thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, commenting. I really appreciate it. It brings me a lot of joy to know that I'm connecting with people about stitching. I really like it. So I'm very appreciative. So keep them coming. If I know that there have been times where I've posted on social media and I'm like, oh, I really want to tag this person so that I can share with them, but I don't know if I want to do just do it. Just tag the person and if they don't if if they don't look, they don't respond, whatever, it's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, so I will see you guys again in three weeks, which I think is actually gonna be into August, early August. And uh, as I say, I should have some more goodies and finishes and things to show you. So until then, happy stitching.